Okay, so this is a 62-year-old female who called her general dentist and advised him that she was having some pain in the upper right quadrant. Um, he reviewed a radiograph at his office and um, assumed that she was developing a problem with tooth number three here. Um, tooth number two had recently been crown prepped and temped, and uh, he referred the patient over to my office to be evaluated for discomfort. So when she arrived, I did a clinical exam on her and found that tooth number two was tender to percussion and biting and had some palpation discomfort. And tooth number three was mostly asymptomatic. In addition, there was a 10 millimeter pocket on the mesia buckle of tooth number one. Um, at this time, I elected to get a cone beam scan because I was seeing some evidence of apical periodontitis on tooth number two and on tooth number three. So I'm going to go over to the scan now. And here we are in the orthogonal slice. And I'm just going to do a quick view throughout the orthogonal slice just to see if there's any asymmetries in the bone or anywhere in the sinus, something that just looks abnormal in general. I'm not really looking at the teeth specifically right now, I just want to get an idea overall what's in the volume. Okay, I don't see anything unusual there, so I'm going to start focusing on the teeth now. I'm going to switch over to the oblique slicing, and I'm just going to line myself up here with the occlusal plane. Just to get an idea here. In general, for those that aren't really that familiar with lining these up, most times I want to line up all my planes with the long axis of the root that I'm looking at or that I'm focusing on. So for example, this root has a curve here and I would want to kind of look at that root in line the best I could. I could adjust it as I go, but in general, that's it. So my first uh, inclination would be to look at this mesiobuccal root of tooth number three due to the apical periodontitis and see if there's any evidence of an MB2 canal. And immediately it catches my eye that the MB1 is offset within the root toward the buccal, which is typically a good um, indicator that an MB2 canal is present. And although I don't see anything blatantly obvious in this area as I go coronal and then axial through the root, or apical I should say, um, I don't see any obvious indicator there, but I do believe it will be there. Uh, some hint of something right here if we focus in this area as I go buccal palatal. Um, I do have reason to believe that it's there. So we can also see that apical periodontitis is readily visible on tooth number two. So as I'm going through the scan, we're just picking up little bits of information on multiple different areas. So uh, I want to kind of move palatal now to get a good view of the palatal root and the distal buccal. Here's the distal buccal of tooth number three which may have a small area associated with there. And then as I move palatal, we're going to look at the palatal root here as a post. And you can see that this area of apical periodontitis is continuous um, with the mesiobuccal root, or maybe that's even mesiopalatal because we're all the way back here. Um, it gets a little confusing on this. There's a lot going on here in this particular scan, which is why I'm using it as an example. But um, coming back up to the axial slice, just want to point out that this is a four-rooted upper upper second molar. One, two, three, four. This root is fused and basically separates uh, right at the apex. So I want to note that the area of apical periodontitis appears to be continuous here from the mesial buccal to the palatal root of tooth number three, extends to the mesial of tooth number two, and then as I move apically a little more, we can see that it continues around these three roots of tooth number two. It's quite a big area, actually. So um, I'm also noting here that there's significant bone loss 
on the mesial aspect of the tooth number one. Um, and this is where that 10 millimeter pocket is. And as I kind of zoom out a little bit, we can see that there's fairly significant bone loss or almost uh, circumferentially around tooth number one. So um, although endodontic therapy can be performed on this tooth, I think we're going to elect to extract tooth number one. And then my plan f moving forward would be uh, to initiate endodontic therapy on tooth number two. Um, it did pulp test non-vital. Uh, going back to the radiograph real quick, we could see that there was an area here, recent crown prep close to the pulp, history of a large MO amalgam in that tooth. So the etiology is likely the large cavity that was on that tooth um, previously in the past. Um, anyway, I'm going to move forward with tooth number two, non-surgical endodontic therapy, extract tooth number one, and then I think my plan is going to be to wait for this to heal for some time to see if this lesion that's associated with tooth number three may be from tooth number two. Because in general, I may not want to have to pull this post out of tooth number three. Um, it may only need endodontic therapy on the buccal root. So those are just some of my initial considerations. I did speak to the general practitioner. He, he did agree with extraction of tooth number one and moving forward with non-surgical endodontic therapy on tooth number three. Two, excuse me.